what is up everyone here's another second generation gold silver crystal Wi-Fi battle and this one is going to be against my good buddy Diego also known as THG S. go check him out he brings some great content I leave the link in the description and our battle is going to be in the OU format and I am sure you will enjoy it as much as we did so let's jump right into it we have here Zapdos on an executor as lead and I decided to switch because I don't have anything to hit this executor with and I figured he won't go for for the sleep powder since he most likely assumes that I'm a rest talker and I got it right and here I went for a fire blast because I was almost sure that he wouldn't switch fearing the pursuit but I actually miss and he hits me with a stun spore here I should have pursued it but instead I went for a fire blast and since I don't know what he has on this team might as well get some damage on something that comes in and that something is cloister which takes a good chunk from it and he's most likely going to set up his spikes but I'm still going to switch into my own cloister to set my own spikes as well because I can spin his spikes away later because I have a star me and he switches right into Zapdos but that's okay because my spikes are already up now and I can now switch to Snorlax because it's the best member on my team to take and move from him. I didn't switch into Marowak for two reasons. Spikes are up and he might go for the hidden power and hit me hard with it. But he goes for the thunder, gets paralysis on me. Not too concerned and because I, ca I can always rest. Here he sets up a reflect which uh, tells me that he's not a rest talker. That's good information. I could go for level kiss but instead I just go for curse because he showed that he has a cloister and an executor who could go for explosion and with the curse up they don't one shot me with it and I decided to go for another curse just to get at that plus two uh, because uh, he, he just goes here for the surf so I, his plan is probably to weaken me w to a point where explosion can take me out but a plus two I can withstand explosion quite well now here just go for a safe rest doesn't matter what he does now but he actually switches into Steelix probably predicting my own my rest and so while I'm asleep he can safely uh, roar me away so a good play on his part so here I just decided to burn one sleep turn if I'm going, if I'm going to get roared out might as well do that Unfortunately, my Stormy gets dragged in, and this is a perfect opportunity to rapid spin my, the spikes away, because he most likely won't go for, to his cloister even if he predicts the rapid spin, and he actually sends in his own Snorlax. So after ra rapid spinning his spikes away, I can now switch more freely without worrying about residual damage. I decided to bring in Zapdos to see what he's going to do. He actually goes straight for the body slam so he doesn't have double edge, he has body slam instead. I figured well if he has body slam probably he's not a curse lax. He's maybe either drum or mixer, I don't know. He actually scores a paralysis here with body slam which it's kinda bad and here he reveals he's actually a curse lax. So he's a curse lax with body slam and I get a full para here on this turn which is also bad because I wanted to rest and make Zapdos faster for later but here I want to get good use of the reflect so I switch to, to Snorlax and my plan here is start cursing as well to, to be more or less equal to him and, when I, and then just sleep him with lovely kiss here I will wake up, and get, get f my first curse up, so I can take his attacks fairly well at the range he's at. But I wasn't sure if he has level keys or not. He only showed me curse and body slam, so I w I didn't want to take any risk and straight go for a level kiss because if he slept my Snorlax and and continued setting up, I would be really, really in a bad position. So double edge is not doing much since he's at plus three if I'm not mistaken and I'm not only at plus one so well another curse up 
to get more damage on him on the next attack. And yeah, just go starting to wear him down to a point where he either has to switch or rest. Double H is now doing more, which is good. And ha now he wakes up and he shows me that he has a lovely kiss. So it's kind of bad news here. So I'm trying to wake up here as soon as possible, but he actually switches to Steelix. Probably don't want me to risk to wake up again and sleep him and take the upper hand. So again, burning more sleep turns as he uses Roar. And McCloister gets dragged in, which is good. He's threatening now, threatened now by the Surf. But now I was thinking, hmm, he might actually bring his Zapdos back in. So I just went straight for the Ice Beam. And I called it correctly, his Zapdos comes in and takes the Ice Beam not at well at all. And on top of that, he gets frozen. That's what was really unfortunate for him. Because he was he's faster and he could easily rest and threaten me out. But nah, but, well, freeze is part of the game. Now I went for Surf, just in case he wanted to switch in Cloyster. And Surf deals more than Ice Beam. But here I see that he just wants to sack his Zapdos, since it's frozen. And so, one big giant threat. Yeah, big giant. I love the redundancy. Well, one giant threat is out of the way. But here comes another one. The Executor. And looking at my team right now, Executor can spell some problems. Because I don't know if he has Giga Drain or not, but most likely he has. One Ice Beam is not enough to take him down. And if he has Giga Drain, it would one-shot my Cloister, or close to it, and, and he would regain a lot of HP back. So I thought here, you know what, if I stay in, Cloister's gonna die anyways. But, so might as well take something down with me. So I went straight for the explosion, boom, right away, Executor down. So, one down for me, two down for him. Cloister would be a good check to Steelix, but... I still might have my Marowak, which can check, pre uh, check him well. And Starmie, even though he doesn't have Surf, my opponent doesn't know that, so he's he will be still be threatened by it. So I bring in Starmie, figuring that he might he might try to bring him back his closer to save his spikes, and I call it correctly. So he doesn't want to stay in against Starmie, risking a powerful Psychic, and which I will go. Snorlax takes it really well being the special wall he is. Now I figured, hmm, he's in a range where two more psychics will take him out. He's probably gonna rest. Almost sure he's gonna rest. So I thought, well, I'm bringing my Marowak in and start threatening him, but he actually doesn't rest, go for the body slam, and paralyzes me. Oh, that was really a bad play on my part. I was almost sure he was going, he's going to rest, but he just went for the body slam. Now my Marowak is paralyzed, but I still can threaten something with Earthquake, since his Zapdos is already gone, and his ex ex Executor as well. Cloyster comes in, and even after Spike's damage, he barely survives the hit. And here, I was thinking, well, he's at a low range. He might predict my Starmie to come in, so he might explode, because it would take out my, my Marowak anyways. And it would take out the Starmie as well, so I thought, well, I, I can bring in Tyranitar to take the po uh, the explosion but as you're going to see here he just went for the safe surf and I was like oh god he he actually went for the surf not the explosion but since I can take another one I just went for the pursuit the reason I went for pursuit is just in case he wanted to switch and preserve his cloister for later pursuit would take him out and even if he stays in, which he does, Pursuit is still enough, because Cloyster's special defense is really low. So my Tyranitar is now on low health, still he comes in, but I, st don't, I don't want to sack my Tyranitar now. And since I have my Zapdos, which usually walls Steelix, unless he has something to hit me with, like Body Slam or Rock Slide, if he doesn't have any of those moves, he can only explode on me. But I figure he won't do that right away. The, ma the match is not—it's not—it's far from ending. 
So here, he's, he, he, since he starts sitting up, I just went for a Whirlwind, and he didn't expect that. To see a Zapdos with Whirlwind, it's rare. But yeah, it's, it works pretty well. Now here, here uh, his last rem uh, Pokemon is revealed, which is a Clefable. So I just went straight for the be uh, for the Thunder, not wanting him to set up Belly Drum, and I actually get the Para, which really helps. And he has no Heal Bell on his team, so the Para is there to stay. Because Clefables usually run Moonlight and not Rest. So yeah, looking pretty good right now. But I still need something to hit this Clefable with. And I figured, well, he might bring Steelix back in. Predicting the Thunder, so I just went for Marowak. Predicting that Steelix to come in. But he actually stays in and went for Moonlight. But that's fine. But since I'm paralyzed, he still be will be faster, so I just went for the Earthquake, just in case he wanted to bring either Steelix or his Snorlax. And he actually stays in with for Fire Blast, and Earthquake does a lot of damage. Well, here I, I, I could go for another Earthquake, because I, I can take another Fire Blast from him, or even a, or even a return. But... And I was thinking, well, I need Marowak to, to threaten his other pokes with, so... Just decided to bring in Starmie, and just start spamming Psychic. Even if he tries to Moonlight. Moonlight has only 8 PPs, and Psychic may get a special defense drop. So, it, it will, it, it's my best move to do here. And two Psychics, I see it's enough, but he actually doesn't Moonlight. Just go for the return, getting some extra damage on me. And yeah, just gonna finish this Clefable off with another Psychic, and now only Snorlax and Steelix remain. But this Snorlax is low on health and has to get uh, to get some spikes damage here. And I know, and I see on, on that range, hmm, is Psychic going to be a two-hit KO even after leftovers? Well, maybe. But uh, and I. I need to go with with Psychic because I cannot switch out here, because if he re uh, even if he rests. But hey, at least I I get some damage here, and even a special uh, probably a special defense drop, but I didn't get it. And Body Slam doesn't para, so I'm looking good here. I was confident. Come on, Psychic, you, you gotta get max damage. Take him out, take him out. But no, he survives. But it doesn't go for rest. But now I don't have anything that's faster than him because all my three pokes are paralyzed. So I decide to go bring in Marowak and go for EQ. Even if he rests, he will get uh, either two or three shotted. So, but here he reveals self-destruct. That's why he didn't rest. He has self-destruct, which I didn't, I wasn't expecting at all. And now here he has only Steelix left. And yeah. My Tyranitar is paralyzed, my Snorlax is asleep, and he's not resting, he's asleep with a Lovely Kiss, so I don't know how many turns he's going to sleep. But... Thing is, I don't know if he can touch me or not. But by the looks of it, he, d he might not have a move besides Explosion to hit me with. But still, I set up the Reflect and go for Snorlax, trying to wake up here. Because if I can wake up, I can hit him with a lovely kiss, I can then set up on my own and try to take him out. And his plan is probably to just set up curses as, uh, as, as much as he can. Roar me out, he roars me out here, which is good, so I can. I need to waste more turns switching, and so the reflect goes down. And he can easily take my Snorlax out. He continues cursing, which is. It's kind of scaring me because if he has that move to hit my Zapdos with, I basically lost the game. Still trying to wake up, not, I'm not getting that lucky wake up, and it's now now it was the decisive turn, but no, he's still asleep and he takes me out. But now I got for Zap for Zapdos again, and I asked him over the chat. Do you have anything to hit my Zapdos with the Steelix? And he says, no, I just have Explosion. So at this point I know 
that I have won the game because si uh, since I rapid spin the spikes away some turns earlier, my Tyranitar won't go down with the spike. It cannot spike sh shuffle my Tyranitar, and this means that this situation would go into a PP stall where he would run out of PP on all his on all of his attacks, and then he would be forced to go for explosion. So he decided just to explode earlier on my Zapdos and make this a close 1-0 game. So the Ergonomics was a really good game, I really enjoyed it, it was intense from the beginning till the end. And if you guys enjoyed it as well, please leave a like and your feedback in the comment section is also really welcome. Subscribe if you want more content and don't forget to check Diego's channel. So it's everything for today. I'll see you in the next battle and peace out.